Hello everybody and welcome to another Skynamic Studios devlog. My name is Zachary Rich. And I'm Allison Trebnik. And welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to our uh, our second devlog. Second, number two. Yeah. We're so excited by like the enthusiasm you guys have shown the project with our first devlog. And we're sorry that this one took us a little bit longer to produce. Zach has been a little under the weather, uh, but That's he's doing right. better now. And uh, we uh, we hope we're able to answer your questions and continue to give you faith in our project. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, without further ado, let's just dive right into what our theme for this devlog is today. So one of the big things that you guys really have been voicing a lot about um, since we started the new version of True Tale was the differences between the old versus the new. And so we wanted to take today's devlog to kind of go a little bit more in depth into it. We went a little in a little into it um, last week, but uh, our, our last devlog, but this time we want to go just a little bit further with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we like to uh, we like to yeah. call the uh, let's go over some terminology. We like to call the old True Tale True Tale Prime, and we like to call our new True Tale just True Tale. Like our our, our new True Tale is True Tale, and the old one is True Tale Prime. Exactly. Yeah, but let's let's go so into the, the, yeah. yeah. So one of the big um, things that is very different from old versus new are the multitude of characters that we are able to create. Uh, as you have seen from like our gifts, we've created a ton more students. And honestly, we're going to be making even more. Uh, actually, a lot of our crew members have created their own OCs and they've started having personalities and characters and, and uh, all this stuff. And we're starting to incorporate them into scripts and writing for future episodes. Uh, but one of the big things is the professors yeah absolutely uh, the introduction of them now now keep in mind that we're we're using terminology here like students and professors but at the end of the day this is still the same world as true tale prime it's all about um a dungeons and dragons-esque uh rpg world which is a, um, a western sort of fantasy and when we say student we mean a young hero when we say professor, we mean an actual hero of the age mm -hmm. that has been fighting monsters and saving villages and fighting the dark mythical creatures of the land. And they have now become professors yep. to train the next generation of heroes. Exactly. The animation that we actually showed you last week was that introduction. That before Caleb was born, before any of these... Um, these young characters came into the world, their parents were the generation that fought back the dark mythical forces. And then the, uh, te the, the heroes of old, after they had won the battle, so to speak, decided to create True Tale to train the next generation of heroes. And that is where Caleb and his friends and all of them come into play. So just like with the old version where there were crazy adventures and uh, a group dynamic, we're still creating that exact same atmosphere uh, with this new version of True Tale. And our goal is to eventually get them outside of the school setting and take them on those wild and crazy adventures that we would have taken our old version on, but the, uh, the characters were a little bit less developed for us to be able to do that yeah we'll definitely have more to say on that a little bit later on in this devlog absolutely but definitely definitely uh this new true tale allows us to create so many more characters gives us so many more opportunities for new characters new personalities and it's always been our opinion that the most important thing when it comes to animation when it comes to storytelling when it comes to creating a visual narrative is the character if you can't have a good story, you can't have a good film without good character. And we we believe that this new version of True Tale has better opportunities for us to create better characters. Exactly. Yeah, one of the, the biggest flaws that we ran into with our initial version of True Tale, and it's important for people to understand that when we started Skynamic, we were very young and very like ill-equipped 
for actually creating a very solid story. So we released artwork, we released animation, we released all of these things, but what we actually were lacking was a very strong character. And we didn't realize it until we started pitching that our story actually was falling flat because our characters weren't very well developed, which initially led to the whole retooling. It wasn't to do a, uh, a sellout sort of thing to create, you know, oh great, another school cartoon. It was to actually build our characters so that they would function better, so we could create more um, stories. Exactly. And that was the biggest problem that we ran into with our very initial True Tale, and we didn't realize it until it was time to pitch. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot, a lot of people told us pretty bluntly, like, "I, we love your art style, we love your design, we love your setting." Uh, what is sort your story? Of, yeah, what is your story? Like, what, why <laughs> what are these characters story? here? <laughs> yeah. So, so that was the first thing that we wanted to tweak. We wanted yes. to uh, introduce more characters. And then the second thing was to try and uh, tweak the setting. Now, True Tell Prime, for those of you that can still remember it, uh, there really wasn't a setting. The setting was every single episode they would be at a – it was a journey um, story. Mm -hmm. Every episode they'd be at a different location, which – is very hard to do when you have no budget. <laughs> it was also a lot of work and it was a lot of new art styles that we had to come up with for every single possible episode that we do. And it just, it just wasn't working for us. And one of the, the big things that we realized was because everywhere in the world was there, they were gonna locate, they could go anywhere in the world. They didn't have a base. They had, there was no home, there was no area where we could return to, uh, which causes a huge problem when you want to actually create characters. Because it turns into this thing of they meet a character and then they're gone and you never see them again. And that's not really the best way of building a world. Yes, you can have the characters journey throughout the land, but if they're not really able to create and form lasting friendships and bonds with characters that they meet along the way because they only meet them for maybe an episode and then they're gone and you don't see them again, you, you're, you're lacking something. And you could say that that's very common in anime and Eastern storytelling for cartoons and any kind of cartoon that does a, uh, a serialized thing where you have one episode and it leads to the second and the third and the fourth. Sadly, that's not exactly the case with animation uh, in the States. Uh, they prefer stories where you have one episode, it tells the story, and then you move on to another episode and it tells the story. So locating all of our characters within one location, uh, at least for a period of time, we can build more characters and have stronger stories uh, instead of just doing one-off characters. Exactly, and then because that provides a stronger foundation to the world and to the show, once we've introduced everybody and we sort of feel comfortable in this location, then we start to go on adventures and have field trips and leave exactly. the safety of True Tale Academy in the village and go and uh, see different cultures and different worlds and, and different areas of, mm -hmm. of this vast medieval land of split paw which is why the next thing that we believe uh is different is actually uh the opportunities that we have for world building itself you now one of the big things and and this is for me creatively uh the big thing with, with zach was for true tale to bid be medieval but i wanted to not have it always be medieval i wanted areas there where you had victorian culture areas where you had egyptian culture areas where you had african culture asian culture so these are just some characters we have an entire folder these are actually done by one of our uh our character designers and he's just absolutely amazing uh his name is oh, what is his last name zach uh I, I, i'm gonna jonathan. butcher it it's jonathan Mon monta monticello is how i'm gonna <laughs> pronounce it that's how i'm gonna pronounce it <laughs> well, uh, he's Jonathan's fantastic. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, but I really wanted our show to have culture so that we had the ability to actually bring uh, knowledge of other places in the world and do uh, designs of clothing and. Uh, props and swords and all this stuff so they felt authentic to an area 
And I'm hoping that, you know, the more that we work on True Tale and more that we build, that we'll actually be able to do authentic cultures and represent uh, the world that we actually live in uh, in this show. Now, keep in mind uh, that uh, even though we're, we're showing different cultures, and which is going to allow us to have a lot more fun with uh, aesthetic and art design, um, mm-hmm. the, the world at its heart is still a medieval fantasy world. It's Tolkien. Yes. It's, you know, Lord of the Rings. It's whatever kind of Western sort of fantasy setting you want to pick. It does still mm-hmm. have that setting revolving around everything and sort of keeping everything to that sort of theme. However, there are other lands within the area that have, uh, you know, an African feel to it, yeah. an Asian feel, an Egyptian, and that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, so it's it's exciting to see where we can go with this. I mean, we even plan on doing like an old Western feel as well. Yeah, I think so we, we have want... plans for a steampunk area kind exactly. of as well too. So yeah. we can pretty much hit every culture that we want because it is a fantasy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so the last thing uh, that we want to talk about with regards to old versus new um, was the actual approach that we take to storytelling in general. We saw um, a couple of comments on a couple of our stuff over, um, honestly, over the past couple of years that uh, mm-hmm. people are worried that because we were pitching to Nickelodeon and because we pitched to Nick Jr. for a little bit that we had kind of dumbed down the story to where we lost a lot of that sort of darkness, that maturity that the old True Tale Prime had. And uh, we're here to tell you absolutely it's the exact opposite. If anything, we've gone yes. a little darker <laughs> because we have a kids setting now, which you can get, you can tell so much more mature storytellings when you're dealing yeah. with kids. Now, one of the things that I really want to stress is even though these uh, these kids may be only like 12 or 13 years old, uh, they don't have the brain of a 12 or 13 year old. They have a much more mature way of thinking about things. Uh, their skill set is a lot higher than that of uh, a youngster. Well, a good way of thinking uh, about it is, yeah. you know, in, in medieval fantasy, like 12 and 13 is practically an adult. You're like, you're a young mm-hmm. adult at that point. So like we definitely treat them as if they're young adults. So there'll be instances and episodes where, you know, Caleb and uh, and Victor are going to be having like a conversation about something, and it's going to, you're going to be like, how is it that this these two young kids are having this kind of conversation? Like this is dark, this is deep. Like what's going on here? So that's something that I I want to really stress that we plan on these characters showing a lot more maturity. They're still kids, so they're going to get into trouble and they'll be mischievous and do all that kind of thing. But this is not going to be, oh, we're going to go to class, we're going to learn our lesson, and here's the message of the day. Oh, my God, no. I would, I would, I would Hell, die. I'd rather kill myself. Like, I would no die. way in hell. No, no like, no. Th- these are all fourth-dimensional characters. When we create a character, we craft uh, um, their aesthetic, you know, what they look like. We talk about... Um, uh, their gait, their how they move, how they interact mm-hmm. with the world around them, how do they speak, how do they um, uh, uh, discuss, how, what's their conversational pattern, and also uh, what are their inner thoughts? How are they going to yeah. evolve and develop over the course of the show? Because these characters are not oh, yeah. static. They are constantly evolving. Like, we actually have an overarching plot line that we've... Uh, naively crafted like over three seasons just because we yes. love telling stories and whether or not we'll exactly. get to that or and not, one, we'll see. <laughs> and one thing that I definitely want to stress is you will not see this happen either because this is a very common uh, thing that you will see in uh, cartoons where you have children involved where the parents are stupid where the adults uh, actually almost cause problems for the kids because they're they lack intelligence I refuse. Yeah. That's not that's not a possibility. The heroes of old are extremely intelligent. And to be honest, they're even going to do things where they're going to trick the children into completing tasks that they're probably not even ready for. I think a, so, like a really good way of thinking yeah. about them too is that they are heroes. They are legends. They're meant to be powerful and intimidating. Like they're yes. supposed to feel bigger and larger than life and we want to get that feeling across to them whenever they appear sure they'll be silly and there'll be some fun moments here and there but overall they're they're meant to be examples of what these children are trying to become precisely so i honestly think that you know 
when it comes to your guys' concerns about, hey, is Victor going to still be a Casanova? Yes. Yes, he is. Is he still going to have fights and whatnot with Dolly? Absolutely. Those are the same things that we had happen in our initial True Tale, and it's going to happen in this True Tale. Yeah, and our, our uh, kid's going to be... Our Canicus, is Canicus still going to be, you know, uh, somebody who's messing with the kids and causing problems and that kind of thing? Absolutely. Is Brutus still going to be more of a father figure to Caleb? Yes, absolutely, yes. 100%. Are we still going to have Melody... our kids having, yeah. like, are they going to be experiencing heartache and tragedy and life lessons and making mistakes? Yes. Absolutely. We're not taking any of that out no it's all it really is all the same the only things that we have changed is making victor and Dolly younger and putting canicus and brutus in a situation of where they are almost parent figures to these youngsters and then changing who are the growing and grooming them to be the next heroes exactly now we can and of still course, see like uh, all of that other stuff. But, like, yeah. We can still see Caleb Dolly, Victor, and Melody like growing older and graduating from the Hero Academy, and then maybe uh, Brutus and Canicus join them and they go on an adventure, and then it suddenly it mm-hmm. is True Tale Prime. It's just farther in the future. Exactly. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, uh, we still have our villains. Yeah. And as and from the initial True Tale, it was necromancy and bones and all this kind of stuff as you can see it's not necromancy as much anymore it's leaders of dark mythical creatures we thought that so that keeping it as necromancy was a little too yeah. boring like to have the yeah. exact same skeletons all the same time but because it's now a leader of dark mythical creatures which allows us to have so many more characters mm-hmm. uh it's just it's awesome it allows us to have so much more fun with the world and with the exactly the, the opponents and antagonists that they fight precisely so we're really excited about you know, this whole new venture of taking True Tale in this direction. And honestly, we're so excited to share it with you and see that from last, uh, from our last devlog, you guys seem to be okay with it. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Now, if after all of this, you're still kind of on the fence and you're still like, ah, I like the old one better. All that we ask is that you just give us a chance. Give us a chance to prove to you that we, it's, we're still crafting the same, world that you fell in love with five years ago precisely all right but i think that pretty much covers like the big initial thing with this devlog let's get to some questions yeah let's so uh you we, guys have them. yeah we always we love how you guys posted so many questions on our last devlog video i mean i think we we're up to about almost four thousand views on it which is amazing we we thought that all of all of you youtube subscribers were gone and we were so worried that we'd post the video and there'd be like 100 views but it was it was like ecstatic to see how many of you still had us subscribed (laughs) it was pretty cool uh now there were too many questions for us to answer all in this one devlog so we kind of we archived every single question we went through every single comment all like 300 plus of them and and we 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 found Mm -hmm. all the questions um but we're only going to be able to answer uh, a couple today. Um, and don't worry, we will get to the other ones uh, next devlog video. And, of course, yes. any new ones that you guys have for today. So our mm-hmm. first question we have is from AH Films. Um, he says, uh, I haven't given up on you guys. My question is, will you give the new characters introductions like you did before? Well, first off, thank you so much for not giving up on us. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> give up on us either. Um, as far as uh, your question... Uh, We've been releasing these GIF animations that are like 10 seconds long, and we already have like 15 of them released, and we've got like another 15 in production right now. That's kind of our way of introducing the characters and their personalities, but as far as like actually with full-on dialogue, like a minute and a half solid animation for each character, probably not. not, We just don't have enough manpower or time to to knock out that kind of uh, complicated project. Also, at this moment, we only have the voice actors for Caleb, Dolly, Melody, Victor, Harper, Canicus, um, and Brutus. So uh, that does create a bit of a problem. I mean, we did release a Victor one. We did release a Caleb one when we did True Tale Prime. But I can tell you right now, those took months 
to create. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have the manpower to be able to do that. Right now we're working really, really extensively on getting our Kickstarter video ready. And once that's ready, like we're gonna launch the Kickstarter. So that's kind of where our big focus is at this moment. So Absolutely. whether we do more character introductions, oh my gosh, I want to really, really badly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like very badly. <laughs> I expect not. we actually will, if the Kickstarter is successful and during the process of waiting, while you guys are like waiting for um, the finished product, that we would actually do. That's a good point. Like that, we'd make them a lot shorter. Like maybe only twenty yep. to thirty seconds, but they'd be fully animated and everything. It, it mm -hmm. honestly depends upon how successful the Kickstarter is. Yep. But all right, our next question comes from uh, Neanpire the Cat, which I freaking love that name. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Dear Skynamic Studios, uh, I've been very excited for True Tale for years now. I also really love the European influence for the settings and characters. It reminded me of popular uh, Franco-Belgian comics such as Asterix and and Tintin. Did True Tale get any influence from European culture and European comics? So I can I can say with this one that I don't really read comics <laughs> <laughs> or play video games for that matter. Um, so no, actually a lot of the culture and everything that comes from True Tale is just history uh, knowledge. Uh, reading Sword in the Stone, or Sword in the Stone, reading like King Arthur's Court and things along those lines. Uh, a lot of that comes from that. It, it and is it's definitely, one of the uh, reasons. Well, yeah. it, it, it is definitely, it, it harkens to Western fantasy. So Absolutely. the whole, like, we, we knock around this term all, all, uh, every so often, like Dungeons and Dragons. Like, it definitely takes an influence from that. And Dungeons and Dragons, in and of itself, takes an influence from Western fantasy, but then Western yeah. fantasy is heavily influenced by like what Allison was saying, uh, King Arthur's Court, um, European culture, uh, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And we're, we definitely have that for starting. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, all exactly. That kind of thing. So True Tale yeah. Academy and the surrounding village and what we have right now is definitely European culture. But like we showed you earlier in the world building section of this devlog, we plan on introducing a multitude of other cultures as well once they journey beyond the walls of True Tale Academy and out into the world. And to be honest, a lot of that just comes from my absolute love of culture and history and studying it through like middle school, high school, and into college. Absolutely. Uh, and now, so that's really where a lot of our influences come from. I'd say probably our biggest influence actually comes from Lord of the Rings yeah, and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Honestly. I think that me personally, like one of the reasons why I really wanted to make like an anthropomorphic version of a medieval fantasy setting is because uh, uh, there's a series of books called Red Wall by Brian Jakes or Jacques or however you pronounce his last name. Uh, they're amazing. I uh, freaking love them. I read them as a kid and I just love the idea of just these sort of just like the idea of having characters in a medieval world, but because the characters are animals, it it introduces a lot of personality and uh, character building that you don't normally get from humans. Um, and I just love that idea. It's just it's so much fun. Yeah. See, I never read Redwall. I read like Shakespeare and all the like old European. Oh, I, I like, read some Shakespeare stories. as well. Let's... No, I didn't read Redwall though, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and lots of Tolkien. So lots of yeah, Tolkien, yeah, lots of Tolkien. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's see. Our next question is from Wild Pool of Wind Clan. Uh, I adore the music you guys used for this and for the teasers and animatics. Would you be willing to upload some of the completed songs? Absolutely. Um, in fact, we already have some completed songs uploaded on our YouTube channel already. Just go to our, uh, I think it's our music playlist. Most of our music mm -hmm. is done by uh, the very fantastic uh, David Greer Larson, who is phenomenal. Almost all of our music has been done by him. Um, we will absolutely be releasing more and more music. Um, most likely they'll be released on his channel, and then we would... Uh, add it to one of our playlists. In fact, if you look at the description for this video, we'll put a link to David's channel in there. You can probably listen to some True Tale music on there, and a lot of his original music is also fantastic as well. Highly recommend checking him out. Yep. He's very, very talented. Definitely. And uh, we, we just saw uh, a, an orchestral pass for the Kickstarter video um, just a, oh, a week ago. And, so oh, good. It was me to tears. It was so good. <laughs> so, oh, I, we can't wait to show you guys. It's phenomenal. All right, our final question of today's devlog is, is, is a great one. It's from Competing Coot 47 
And uh, uh, they write, Dear Skynamic Studios, uh, thank you very much for being determined in continuing this project. I support this new concept of True Tale, and I'm eager to witness how the characters will interact with each other in a school-based setting. The devlog was very informative, and it reinvigorated my anticipation for this show. Question. What led the story of True Tale to be depicted with anthropomorphic animals instead of regular humans? P.S. I noticed a slight inconsistency between the end of the video and the description. Will new devlogs be released once every week or once every two weeks? Uh, Both good questions. Yeah, so we'll answer that, that last question first. Uh, we're trying to aim for every two weeks. Uh, we would have released this last week, but as Allison said in the beginning, I was really sick last week. Um, but yeah, every two weeks is when we want to do it. And then if we get into like a really good rhythm... And it turns out we just have more that we want to say. We might go to one week's, but for now, it's just every two weeks. Yep. As far as uh, why we're using anthropomorphic animals, I think we kind of already answered it in the last question. <laughs> we just really love animals. Yeah, like, yeah I mean, Zach, um, like the initial true tale, uh, Zach had like a huge uh, impact on. So doing the, the whole like red wall influence makes perfect sense. But I actually think that um, when... We were going through and we were switching over to like the new true tale there was a, a moment where i actually had considered why don't we just make it all children and just make them human and one of the reasons on why it's best not to make them human is because you can actually do so much more with animals uh one of the biggest uh issues that you'll run into with cartoons uh because of censorship and things like that is violence so you can't really showcase violence when you have, you know, two children fighting with swords doesn't exactly work well. However, a cat and a bunny, you can kind of get away with that. Like, yeah. that's okay. You're not really going to run into the problem of the censors going, oh my gosh, SMP's all mad. They're upset because you had, you know, somebody cast fire or whatever. Like, I can tell you right now that when... Uh, I was working at Nickelodeon on Harvey Beaks. We had an instance where uh, the kids could never light fire. They, they they would go on a camping trip and just fire would magically happen in in the fire pit area <laughs> where they were like roasting marshmallows. Like you turn away for a second and all of a sudden, boom, there was fire. And it was, it was really eye-opening uh, because it was like, oh, darn, like, you can't do this. Like you're not allowed to they can't actually make fire well by having animals and having magic where they can magically just go poof there's fire <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of saves you a lot um Agreed. especially yeah so i think one of the biggest reasons why using animals versus people people is imitatable behavior nobody can actually do the animal stuff I mean, when when Caleb gets like angry or something, or he gets into a fighting stance, and all of a sudden he's like running up a tree. I'd love to see a little like eleven year old run up a tree. And it's, then not a, gonna, it's not possible. Yeah, uh, and then an another really big reason why we prefer animals over humans is that again, like uh, we, we said earlier, animals have more character to them. Yes. Um, like their when ears, you're, their tail. Yeah, their ears oh, can move so and twitch. There, they can wrinkle their noses. Their tails are characters in and of themselves. The idea exactly. that we we have a chef who's a pig, <laughs> or yeah. uh, it's just like it's just just looking at an animal, you already get a sense of of wh who they are, which is so much mm -hmm. fun to develop and to craft and to design. And we also just feel like it's more appealing and it's more marketable as well. We feel like. Uh, a medieval fantasy world with anthropomorphic animals is, and it just feels more fresh. Yep. And honestly, the most basic answer to this is we liked animals and this is what we chose to do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're giving a lot of really <laughs> so good mature it. reasons, but we just really yeah. like anthropomorphic animals and yeah. we just wanted to tell a cool I mean, story. I, I have a dog. He's sorcery. got two cats. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. we're, like, we're obsessed with animals. Like, we, yeah. It's for, it's they're, for, yeah. We could go around and around in circles and be like, we got this idea and SP and blah, blah, blah. No, we like animals. Yeah, we just like animals. We really <laughs> like them. They're awesome. <laughs> All right. But well, yeah. Yeah, excellent question. It. Thank you so much, Shabiti <laughs> Coot. <laughs> so, um, uh, the last thing we want to go over before we, we end off the devlog, real quick, because uh, we know this is getting kind of long, and we always tell ourselves, oh, we're going to make it 15 minutes, and here we are at the 30 minute mark. <gasps> <gasps> so much. Um, you can't help it. 
Now, uh, we do have Fan Art Fridays. For those of you who have been following our social media for the past year, you're already aware of this. But every Friday, sometimes Saturday, we like to release uh, fan art. Um, so if you guys uh, do any fan art of True Tale and you'd like to see us feature your fan art on all of our social media, um, like our Twitter and our, our uh, Tumblr, our Instagram, our Facebook, um, all you have to do is just draw some really cool fan art that has True Tale themes to it. Send it over to truetalemedia at gmail.com, and we'll feature it. Absolutely. This is just some of examples of some fan art that we've featured in the past. Yep. <laughs> I, and I, I, like, I like should, the top middle one. Also, <laughs> <laughs> I think we should also say, Zach, that like we're still hiring. If you guys are interested in joining our team and becoming part of the story, we are more than welcome to bring you on board. We're always looking for animators, character illustrators, vector artists, Layout uh, artists. Painters. Yeah, we're absolutely. Really, we're really, really looking for good color concept painters. So if you like to paint in Photoshop and make beautiful backgrounds uh, or, or paint beautiful backgrounds that are drawn by somebody else, we are absolutely interested in you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and even if yeah. you don't know the programs, like you're really good at animation, but you don't really know Flash that well, that's all right. We'll train you. Um, yep. All you have to do is just uh, send your send a link to your portfolio and or demo reel to, again, truetailmedia at gmail.com. We'll look through all your stuff if we think that it fits our style. Or even if it doesn't, we just think you have potential. We'll hand you a test, and you'll do a quality control test. And if you pass the test, you'll be on the team. Yep. I can say right now that the two positions we are not hiring for is we don't need any more voice actors. And we don't need and any more writers. And we're not hiring any writers. Yeah, so it's writers and voice actors. Yep. We're not looking for any of those. At this time, that could change the At future. Yep. We recommend paying attention to our social media, and we will announce it when we're looking for it. Yep. But I think that covers our very second devlog. Yeah! So yay! Thank Excellent. you so much for thank paying attention and listening to us. Yeah, and thank, thank you for sitting there fan. for 30 minutes just looking, like, hearing us talk. <laughs> oh, it's pretty amazing. We're going to work on trying to get them shorter. Yeah, I we'll, told we'll Zach try. we should have only answered one question. He went with four. I, I, so you guys had so many him. good questions, though, so... Uh, and then speaking of questions, have a question, comment below. We'll definitely answer it in the next yep. video, or at least we'll archive it, and we will eventually get around to answering it. <laughs> and I as always... I can tell you that some of... Yeah. Oh, yeah, go oh, ahead. Go ahead, Zach. Oh. Well, I can say that our next couple of devlogs, we're going to talk about merchandise. We're going to uh -huh. talk about parents, uh -huh. uh, the worlds that each one of these kids lives in a Absolutely. little bit more, and we'll definitely be showing you more artwork and more animation to come. A lot come. more animation. Uh, yes. We couldn't fit animation into this devlog, but we're definitely going to show a lot more of it next devlog. Yep. And as always, if you want to learn more about True Tale or uh, sign up for our newsletter and all that jazz, head on over to www.skynamicstudios.com Thank you as so always, much, everyone. Thank you. We love you. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.